What's going on, y'all? It's Mark from TCG Discussions coming at you with a red purple law discussion today on whether or not it should be, should be banned. Um, I'm just gonna spoiler, gonna talk about it needs to be banned, uh, but we're gonna get to some house uh, clearing stuff real quick. Um, I got all of my Rob Lucci deck done. Um, I look forward to bringing a guide, um, play lines, everything in depth guide. It's gonna take me a bit because there is a lot of complicated stuff. Um, especially when you're going to talk about your matchups, we're only talk about the big meta matchups uh, of, you know, Black, Yellow, Luffy, uh, you know, Red, Purple, Law, Roll My Eyes, um, you know, Anel, so on and so forth. If there's anything that you should pr pr pretty much be running into and then kind of like how to play uh, best cards, all that other stuff, much like my Moria or my Sakazuki guide. Um, so look forward to that. Um, uh, but today's video is going to be primarily discussing Red Purple Law, why it's broken, why it needs to be banned. I'm going to discuss some things that I know nobody's really talking about. So we'll, we'll get into that and then we'll um, kind of just dissect the leader first. Then we're going to kind of talk about the support cards around it and why like, it is a perfect storm of a mess of a leader that should be banned. Uh, this, is, this leader is more broken has a higher upper potential limit than Sakazuki. Sakazuki is only as, as good as the tools that were like given to it, whereas the you know the, the tools that it could draw and, and are in front of it. But the leader just has way too much. So you know, starting off with the leader, you know, you have three effects on this leader: three, Dawn minus, okay, and bottom deck and play a card, okay. So this four five leader, this four life, 5,000 power leader that came out of the structure deck 10, you know, three captains is running completely rampant in the 08 meta. Okay. It, there's just really not enough to say about how dominant it is. It's worse than Sakazuki and probably more oppressive than Whitebeard. Okay. If you played it on the sim in the East, there's game states where you think you're winning and then you've just lost. There's nothing to do. You cannot win. There's no point. And um, I guess we'll just start breaking it down. The cost, the Dawn minus three. That's not even a cost anymore. Okay. The, we've forsaken the idea of that card even having cost on it. And this is part of the problem with the support, which we'll get to in a second. But I'm just going to explain one scenario to you that's not even an 08 that should explain why this is really stupid. So if I have used this Captain Kid and Sachi Penguin in hand, at five Dawn, I can play down the kid and then minus my Dawn, get two back from Sachi Penguin and get one back from the kid. So I get that cost to play nine cost of Dawn worth of cards is effectively gone. Now, Sachi Penguin was inherently designed to do that to a degree, okay? And I will grant you that, and that's been around forever. But the issue is that it gets far worse in 08. I'm not even going to talk about Black Maria till later, but we'll talk about Pudding. We'll talk about Pudding right now. So what Pudding does is it's basically kid, but the car comes in rested. So if you have Pudding on the board at like the previous turn, right? And then you play the kid and do what I just told you to do. You didn't just like break even for that nine cost worth of Dawn in bodies to play. You plus in Dawn, which is ridiculous, okay? There's, there's nothing about that that should be okay. The cost doesn't even exist anymore. And that's where the power creep of the game is going to always break this leader. It is always going to like widen the field for the field of view for the leader in order to just push it over the edge and continue to do so. It, 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 it's why it's not a Black Maria issue or a Pudding issue or a Eustace Kid issue or a Bond Clay. It is always the leader. The leader is the problem, okay? Let's talk about the, the, the removal. It's bottom decking, which is the most powerful in the game. The only card in the game that I'm aware of that cannot be removed by that card's effect is Basil Hawkins in, like, Bonnie. Because you can just rest a card 
in its place. But I also heard yesterday, I was talking to a buddy of mine who actually just top sixth um, at a regional, got his serial cards and everything. So, you know, congrats to him and everything. He was telling me that on the sim, and I'm not sure if the ruling works this way, that if Basil Hawkins doesn't have anything to rest, it gets removed, which would be the stupidest thing that I've ever seen. So, like, yeah. Like, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say to that. Like, so the idea is that if you swing with everything and everything is rested and he has nothing to rest, then he just gets removed, which would be absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. So if that is honestly the case, then this is just another reason why this leader needs to be banned, because even that a card that is should be immune to removal once per turn, period, still cannot get away from this leader's effect. So, and then there's the fact that we play a body, okay? There is something to free cards that is problematic. It's one of the reasons why people want to argue for Gekko Moria to be banned. But Gekko Moria can't be, Gekko Moria should never be banned. And just a like side tangent to compare this to law for a second. Gekko Moria right now uh, in 07, so I'm saying right now, but 07 releases in like a week, five or six days. But like Gagamori can play 21 Dawn worth of cards for eight. But it's an eight cost card. It takes up the majority of your turn. You're not really going to attack with anything else that's not already on the board. You're not playing rush cards. You are playing very good removal cards. So you can play Rebecca into Helmeppo, into uh, Spandine, into Lucci. You get a full board of cards. You get this absolutely du broken double removal in numbers for low cost cards on the board. If you have an e show on the board high cost cards is getting affected the the upper limits of this is like awesome like uh, what you can do but it's a combo that requires a specific set amount of cards and the removal of it is contingent on what's in your drop and gecko moria is only as good as what's in your drop okay and the other issue is that gecko moria lifts a lot of decks into the competitive sphere to contest certain decks so like a lot of people talk about like sakazuki like how broken it is in Sokka. And it is a very good card in Sakazuki. Like, don't get me wrong. It's better in Luchi, and it's better in Gecko than it is in Sakazuki, but it's still powerful enough, plus what Sakazuki does to make it really good. But like take Black Yellow Luffy, for example. If you removed Gecko Moria, Black Yellow Luffy could not even exist, and you would literally allow Black to run rampant, right? Gecko Moria existing allows black decks to have a severe counter in black yellow Luffy. And so that's very different than what this leader is. This leader is not even in the same conversation when we're talking about free cards. Okay. So remember that cost I was talking about? Well, I can prove to you in 08. And even right now in EB01 going into 07, there is no cost to this effect. So you are literally playing a body for free from your hand. And you are not spending anything to do so. Imagine if it just said, play a four, four for five out of your hand. Doesn't matter what the effect is. Doesn't matter what it does. It's just that. Okay. And uh, on top of that, you remove a card. So it's got no cost. You play a card for free and you get to remove a card. It does everything that Gekko Moria does, except for it didn't cost you eight dollars for the turn. Right. It didn't take up your whole turn. It's not a card that you could play right away either. It's a card, like, you know, like, Gecko Moria can't be played until you get to 8 Dawn. Law's Effect can be activated as soon as he gets to 3. This is second turn. And then, like, everybody's like, oh, oh you know, you know, whatever. You don't want to play about Gecko. You want to play about Big Mom. They want to complain about all this other stuff. No, but Red Purple Law is a free play card that costs absolutely nothing, basically, right now, in real time, right now, and it's removing cards while establishing multiple bodies. But then just turn sideways beat you down, whatever, and then you just, you know, eventually collapse like Kid Killer, Restore, and whatever other hot nonsense, okay? Let's talk about pivoting from that, right, on the a subject of free play, why the leader, quote-unquote, is toxic to every single purple and red card printed going forward. When Structure Deck 10 came out, you had the support that came out for it, plus a very limited number of cards, that would be effective and good in it. Gordon was almost immediately targeted to be good. It's a card that's a promo that is very, very rare and in very, very high demand. 
I think right now Gordon is $40 a piece for a promo that is not given out anywhere else other than the events it was given out in. And it doesn't matter if your shop has like a billion of them in packs just sitting around doing whatever. What matters is that like it's a promo that has very, it has no like reprinted playability at all. And like because of that, it it now, and that coupled with Raise Max, it has eight copies of this, co this kind of removal. But back then you had Gordon. If you wanted some extra removal, you had Fire Fist, maybe Round Table, you have Otama, people were attacking like the, the five six Zoro that minuses two, Brook, the Dawn X one minuses two cards, two things, so on and so forth. So you could kind of like make the numbers work and things could get a little bit fun. People were playing Ace, even though it was minus minus two, two things, you got the seven for seven body on the board, that next turn could swing, all this other stuff, right? So l l l l l we can see it. You had Queen right zoro the, the heart pirate stuff that like came out with the deck but it wasn't too bad because like at the end of the day right the cost to play the card for free couldn't be spammed every turn because if you did and you didn't have sachi penguin you basically forfeited your next turn you basically forfeited your next turn so it was just really problematic right you weren't doing a whole lot you just weren't doing a whole lot. Let's talk about 05. Usus Captain Kid comes out. Usus Captain Kid comes out. And oh my gosh. Now it's starting to get a little bit serious. Now it's starting to get a little bit serious because the kid refunds the Dawn back. Sachi Penguin. That entire play cost you no Dawn. Right there on that spot with that one card. That card became free. Sorry about the next card comes out. OPO6 runs around. Law still not doing all that much. Still can't really do that much. Just a little bit problematic. But it would take a really, really good player to top an event. Going into 06, so 05 meta, take a really, really good player to top with that deck. You have to know the ins and outs, have to know your matchup spread, have to see the right cards. Right? Queen, best draw engine. A lot of people will play the Khalifa 2K of that whole nine, nine, nine yards nonsense. But 06 rolls around. Gets raised max, obviously. Broken. Film, you know, like Film Searcher with uh, uh, Buena Festa to search out some of these cards. Okay. And then it gets Raju. Okay. Raju then becomes a draw two for being at less dawn which are gonna be the whole game. Gonna be basically the whole game. All you have to do is like do it for one turn. Even if you're maintaining the status quo of Dawn, eventually your opponent gets ahead of you, right? And so it draws two. And this solves almost immediately one of the problems with the law, being able to starve it out out of resources. At least when they put their 2K Khalifa on the board, it had to live the turn and then swing with its effect. But no, Raid you. Yeah, we're just getting, you know, Raid you's fine. It's fine. It's, man, it don't matter. Just draw two for being at less dawn. And so now this free body is generating more cards. It's free body is solving one of the main issues to beat the deck, which is your cards that turn sideways, if they don't have a lot of high attack impact, which again, the cost of law, dawn minusing, should prevent you from being able to swing with big numbers and then i get to swing back at them but when you don't lose any dawn and continue to go up in dawn throughout the turns this just essentially means that all the free bodies he's putting on the board can now start swinging like sixes and sevens and if he's playing two bodies a turn and then drawing two cards and getting all his dawn back well, he's not losing out on any resources, and he's drawing into his really good cards, aka like a Rush Zoro. But this is only by 06 at this point. Then EB01 comes out. Gets Bond Clay, gets Kid Killer. And now the deck is starting to break, right? Now Law is not just looking like that deck that it would take a really good skillful player to do. Even with like the support of Reiju, the deck was not good. Okay, it was not very good. 
but Kid Killer and Bon Clay drastically changed that. Why? Bon Clay gives the, the Dawn active. Not to mention it is a deterrent for your opponent to play a high cost card unless that card is removing the Bon Clay, which is inherently problematic at the start. That card would sit there and not even attack. Even if you had a 5k on board, they still probably wouldn't swing with the card unless you put something a little bit meteor on board, or they could like, you know, kind of flex in some like series of attacks on a play line that would kill you. And the issue with Bond Clay is that the Dawn came in active. So if Kid was on the board, you know, the whole Sachi Penguin uh, effect I was talking about, you're going to be at one less Dawn than you were for the turn, but you get two active to immediately make your leader swing seven. And this is something else. Dawn minus effect shouldn't be able to be a Dawn minus off of cards that are attached to cards. This would be a mechanic change that I think would be very good to do. Because it would require you to use Dawn not for offense and then just use it for effects like this. Because Dawn, like, like Dawn minus effects on leaders, also like a, a Zephyr, for example, or something that, like like any, like anything else that has like Dawn minus on it, like like a, like Kaido, right? If the Dawn had to be on, in the Dawn area in order for you to use the effect, it would be a lot better. So you would just be able to stack up Dawn and then remove it off the board. But again, we shouldn't be changing mechanics because of a leader. And that's exactly what this, this leader is quote unquote calling to do. It's calling for changes in the game. But we're not done breaking it down because EB01 comes out, then they get Kid Killer. Kid Killer. I have no idea why they ever made a card like that. Like, as soon as I saw Kid Killer, I almost thought that Monkey D. Luffy that's unblockable is just dwarfed. It is a card that says for four dawn, I get a 7k swing instantly. Instant value, instant two cards out of your hand or demanding a blocker in a 2k, generally because most blockers have six these days. Okay? And not to mention, it's end game pressure with the stupid thing that I just talked about. Even at seven dawn, when I attach two to a 5k, swing seven, attach one to a 6k kid, swing seven, and then I dawn minus three to play a kid killer, swing, you know, if they're, they have no dawn open, now swing for 11 for the other four. Or play a kid killer, swing seven, dawn minus three, swing seven, right? So you just got four 7K attacks immediately, immediately. And, you know, again, this crap is all for free, basically. Because it's not like, it, even more so because the kid's on the board, it's actually going to be 12 because you're going to get the dawn back. That's not including an 08 if you get pudding on the board. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Then 07 comes out. Then 07 comes out. And what do they get? They get Sanju 2K. Right? They get Sanju 2K. A 6K blocker, basically now for three, and can be played for free off the leader effect. So not only do they get cards for free or reduced cost because of what's going on in the game state they're simultaneously just getting more blockers that are also 2ks are you starting to see a pattern here is it starting to dawn on you with what the the common denominator here is it is not that these cards are busted because in no other combination of decks out there in the ether do all these cards accumulate into another deck and they have even the same level of impact or result? Notice everything I'm talking about. Raju, I'm talking about Kid, I'm talking about Clay, I'm talking about, you know, this new Sanji 2K, I'm talking about Kid Killer, right? First off, it requires the red, red purple combination, but furthermore, even more than that, right? You, you have to like literally just understand that while all these cards are great purple cards and most purple card most most purple colored decks will be running a certain number of these cards they may not be running all of them you're not playing raju and red red purple luffy why because you're not going to ever be lower than your opponent in dawn unless you use the 10 cost it's just not going to happen it's not going to happen in purple luffy either you ain't never going to be, your, your job is to get up there for Kaido. Then after you play Kaido, you might play a Raju, but you ain't certainly going to do it till then. You have to play a big body 
at, at the mid to late game already or entering the mid to late game just to get the dawn back in order to play this card again that's why it's not good in kaido either it's definitely not good in kaido because you're never going to be lower than your opponent at dawn your whole point is to play only guys you might ramp above them so that you can just keep getting extra value on your following turn with either bigger cards bigger plays or more like divvied up plays with like your attacks or whatever and Raju, it just falls to that. The only th only deck that like that is really good in is Raju, which is, you know, admittingly, it is broken in Raju. Like, 100% broken. But at the end of the day, right, when we're stopping to take a look at, like, RP Law, right, Raju is busted in that deck because of, like, his ability. Like, he is so broken with Raju, he stops Raju, the deck, from being a thing while playing Raju. Okay. So we get this, we get this, uh, this, this Sanji blocker, another 6k attacker, potentially on your opponent's turn, has the ability to wall up, give it some extra boost to defenses, and it's just nonsense. And then with the reduced cost of the car being down to three, guess what? That's the perfect number for the leader effect and just mo, mo removal, all right? Okay, tracking, we're following. Oh, wait. And this is where it gets serious, Okay. Oh wait, it gets only two cards that put the deck from top tier, top competitive tier, to insanely tier zero busted. Okay, and that is putting the card that we've already kind of somewhat talked about, bringing that dawn in rested, and plusing you in Black Maria. Okay, Black Maria on paper is one of the most advantageous cards ever printed in the game. I won't, lie, I won't lie to you. It is. Do you want to know why Black Maria isn't broken anywhere else other than Law? Because no other deck can commit to what it wants to do in the early game to make the value of Black Maria busted possibly other than Zephyr, which no one's going to play. No one's not going to play Zephyr. Okay? Here's the issue. Here's, here's the problem. So Black Maria is a broken card. It's a 2K. Why it's a 2K, I'll never know. Should have just been a counterless card. Has the activate main. If you have no other a Black Maria on the board, gain five rested Dawn. And at the end of your turn, remove your Dawn so that you're the same as your opponent. Well, with Law, when you're under your opponent the entire game and use a Dawn minus effect, and that Dawn minus effect can play the Black Maria to the board, and then you just get five Dawn and then subtract all the way down to your opponent. So if you were four Dawn behind them, now you're four Dawn a plus. All for the, if you're four Dawn behind them for the turn, play down Black Maria with Kid on the board or in a, in a pudding. You basically only played it for one Dawn less and then you gain five and you are at the same Dawn as your opponent and you don't lose any more Dawn. And this now then turns all of their cards on the board into severe aggro pieces, and then you just get double kid killered and removed out of the game. Do you see the common theme here and why this leader is problematic? Sakazuki had to get a card tailored to blue navy search Tashigi to bottom deck Rob Lucci effect with that specific archetype in mind. Black Maria is a general card for purple everywhere because powerful Dawn Minus effects, like the card I think that they were intending it for, like the, the Big Mom, right? Black Maria, it, it, the Big Mom Kaido, the Dawn Minus 10, or a, a Luffy effect, Dawn Minus 10, or like a Kaido effect, Dawn minus six or the other effect, Dawn minus seven to, to trash a life. All Black Maria was designed with those cards in mind so that when you played a big blowout card, you didn't just die immediately and lose the game. But notice how Black Maria is not played in any other deck in seeing as anywhere near level of success or play. Even in Zephyr, it's not as good as it's not, it's not nearly as good. Zephyr isn't playing a body every turn while removing a card. It's just removing a card. And it's a Dawn minus four, which is much greater. So like Black Maria would have great help for the deck because the effect is far too costly for what it's trying to do. 
I get popping a three or less is kind of a big deal with all the reduction that exists in One Piece for cost, but that's not the same thing. Dawn minus four and Dawn minus three are not in the same conversation, even in terms of number of recovery. You, it would require you to do the same thing to remove a card, basically, in law. It would require you to have the pudding, the kid, and you can't even play the Sacha Vengo, so it doesn't even matter, right? It would require all that, and you're still going to be at two less Dawn than you were when you started. Well, with law, it's just going to be all free. It's going to be free plus and then some. And that is, that's the problem. Okay, and if, if this is the theme, the underlying theme, if you haven't got it yet, on why the leader needs to be banned. This is not just a one-off card issue. This is not just a Black Maria issue. Now, granted, I think Black Maria, after law gets banned, it should, should get banned. It, you know, if slash when this leader gets banned, it is possibly going to be equally as broken in Reiju. We wouldn't even know that, though, because Reiju can't even be played because this deck exists. But even if that were the case, right, even if we were to walk down that road for a second, we would be able to maybe look at Black Maria then, but still probably not as much because she's not that broken in anything else. Because everything else that Black Maria is very, 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 very good in simply requires you to understand that the cards they're playing to make Black Maria good are bombs. Okay, bombs. Bombs on bombs in order to make it broken. And that is okay because that's what it's for. It's to put you back in a somewhat of an even keel of the game and not just have this, oh, uh, you know, I played 10 cost Kaido, blew up my board and their board, but like I got nothing else and no Dawn. Right, like that, it was is designed to do that. It's designed to mitigate these high cost, high high cost Don minus effect cards, and I'm okay with that because if Purple Kaido got support to make it semi relevant when Whitebeard is still winning tournaments in 06, then I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm okay with that. I mean, shoot. It makes me mad that Bonnie is so... Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about pre-releases in another time. But Bonnie is so removing Kid out of even the only area it had left, which was at your pre-release and sealed events. That's where Power Creep is. We don't need all the leaders to be relevant and good. We don't need that. That's fair. And simultaneously at the same time. It doesn't hurt that they get a little bit of love. It doesn't hurt that like... Like, if that's, like, your favorite deck and it gets a little bit of love with some support here and there, that's fine. But the underlying issue is that Law just continuously, indirectly, not even for the archetype or reasons these cards were made, abuses them better than anyone else. It is the first time you're going to hear me say this on this channel, so I want you to listen closely to my words. This leader inherently limits card design. I have never, I have fought against that phrase for years in my discussions about Dragon Ball Super Masters. This card limits card design. This color limits card design. This, this, this leader limits card design. As long as they're going to do this, like they can't do this, they can't do this, they can't do this. I've always fought against it. I've always fought against it. And the reason I've always fought against it is because just because something is inherently good doesn't mean that, like, it's immediately limiting card design. Like, we can't build, like, this hyper-broken-like effect because of this. It's just, like, a stupid argument 90% of the time. 99% of the time, it's a stupid argument. There's, you're not limiting card design, right? All you'd have to do is make the archetype it was intended for in Dragon Ball Masters better than the deck that's currently playing it in in arc type house effects and it doesn't limit card design right and power creep will naturally escalate and, and move on make you move on from leaders anyway and if it doesn't they need to be banned see mecha frieza but that's not the same thing as law law is not even in the same conversation as any of those other decks because this deck is not a problem because of itself it's it, it well, i should say it's not a problem because of its archetype. It is a problem because of all the non-archetypal support generically given to the field 
of red and purple. And so every single card that is low cost red, if it has rush tag written on it, law will look at it. If it's a broken blocker that's a four cost, law will look at it. If it's a broken five or six or seven cost that has an insane effect that like will allow them to generate multiple bodies or something stupid to the board, law will look at it. All right, it's not just four cost. We play queen, we play kid, right? If it's a stupid Dawn Recovery card, we'll look at it. Ein's not even that good to me. And yet I think Peppo is better. And yet Ein is being played in it. Ein is being played in it. Right? So it, you have a variation of an amalgamation of multiple parts from multiple sets that breaks this leader. And then everyone's going to be like, well, Sakazuki was oppressive. Why don't, why can't we just have our red purple all time in the sun and let this deck be good and all this other stuff? I'll tell you why. It's very simple. We ban Sakazuki. We ban Sakazuki for less. I'm telling you right now, we banned him for less. The bans to Sakazuki and the reasons we took him out of the meta are for far less than what this deck is doing. Ain't no dang way. Sakazuki died in a number of ways. It didn't have counter, so it, it got rushed out. It didn't see the removal right, and then it got rushed out. Or it just died because it wasn't playing its game plan. The sequencing was extremely difficult, and at times you had to plan far ahead for what your next turns will be. Planning for that. Making decisions in the moment. Even the card you trash in your hand required forethought potential planning right none of that exists with law none of it there's some sequencing here or there but trust me when i say it's elementary and very basic you just basically have the cards or you don't and then you'll draw into them with reiju or queen eventually and then you'll just win the game and it's becoming completely skillless there is no skill into having the forethought of whether or not this Dawn Minus is going to affect your kill turn if you just get all your Dawn back. And everyone wants to talk about Black Maria as the issue. The common denominator is the leader across all these cards. What other deck breaks Reiju? None of them. Other than Reiju. The, the deck she was intended to play in. What other deck breaks Eustace Captain Kid? None of them. None of them. Not even the kid leader that like the NST10. None of them. Great kid. None of them continuously every single turn get to refund a, a Dawn and abuse that effect the way that this leader does. Kid Killer. There's only one deck in the game that I can think of that abuses Kid Killer more than Law does. And that is Red Green Luffy. Who the, who the heck is playing that? Hmm? Shout out to you, Taylor, for actually playing that and winning a couple locals. But that's not the point. Who's playing that? Nobody. They ain't, certainly ain't going to be trying to play it against a black meta full of Luchi and Moria and Law. They're certainly not going to be trying to play it there either. Okay? So, again, Bond Clay. Who else abuses it? Mr. Two? Mr. Two, Bond Clay? Who else abuses him? Nobody? Purple Croc? Maybe an occasional, you know, Luffy, Red Purple Luffy? Are we going to start moaning and groaning and playing if a three-life leader, Granny's a 6K, but a three-life leader with what his leader effect is and what he does? Are we going to be moaning and groaning and complaining about that? It's a dual card leader, not even. White Beard has six life and gets 13 cards in hand. And this man starts off at three because he has an inherent ramp effect that on in 08 pudding gets from her first freaking attack so are we really going to we're really going to complain that red purple luffy getting no the answer is nothing none of them break it sanji blocker none of is not abused anywhere nearly as hard anywhere else zoro same thing the list keeps going 
the common denominator among all of them is the leader. And if you don't understand that, if you can't see that after everything I've explained to you, and your opinion is red purple law should still exist, there is no hope in reaching you through rationality. This leader is more toxic than Sakazuki ever was. Why? What did talk what on earth besides Gecko Moria, which every black deck can run? It makes Perona good. It makes Red Black Yellow Luffy good. It makes Gecko good. It makes Luchi good. It made Sokka good because it's a good card. But it's an eight cost card that is only as good as what's in your trash. Okay? That's it. That's it. And sure, in Sokka, it was broken because you could set it up a lot better by getting rid of cards in your hand and drawing a card. Fair. Guess who's banned? Sokka. Fair. But again, when it comes to law, there is not another leader in the game that plays every other low-cost purple and red card better than he does. There isn't. Doesn't exist. Not a thing. Sorry to tell you, the leader is broken. He is a broken leader. It has three effects, not two, not one, three. The translation of his effects are free play, removal, and more dawn. That is where it is going. So what are we talking about? How can you justify that? At least Saka wasn't playing Borsalino to the board for free. Right? Tell me if I'm wrong. How am I wrong with that? Red Purple Law isn't even necessary to address the meta. What does it address? What on earth is being gatekept that is so heinous that red purple law is a necessary evil. There isn't. Sokka, you could argue, there is a lot of decks that needed to be addressed. Zoro and red green law have got nothing but better support. Zoro's even making a comeback in 08 with the animal kingdom stuff. Right? The Goa kingdom animal, animal rush Zoro nonsense, it's making a comeback in that. Right? Those leaders should be gatekept by power creep. And by God, if Rob is like Rob Lucci willing, right? He will continue to keep those decks at bay and out of the meta as they should be. They had their time in the sun. They've been around for too long. I don't give a crap how skillful you were. I don't give a crap what serial cards you got with them. Their time in the sun is done. I'm still mad that Whitebeard is still somehow winning events in 06. Still mad about that. Should have just kept the leader banned. Don't give a crap about what everyone's feelings are. And this is the other thing. Your feelings about whether or not your deck has been good is because it's been trash this entire time and it finally gets to be broken and like tier zero and like, shouldn't we just have our time? Absolutely not. I literally just, I, I mean, just go look at the tournament results. Every single finals is red, purple, all mirror. Every single one. Every single top 16. It is now getting to the point where the top 16 is at least 10 plus of every single deck being red, purple, law. But what are we talking about, man? Sakazuki wasn't even that dominant. It wasn't that dominant in 05. It wasn't that dominant in 06. And it wasn't even been that dominant in 07. And yet here we are. Here we are. So, like... I mean, look, the key is definitively destroying everything. Sakazuki was only that dominant in the East, wasn't even remotely that dominant in the West. It was so not that dominant in the West that, like, the majority of nationals won for the world championship qualifier in the West were won by Purple Luffy and an L. The United States did not have a single win. North America did not have a single win with Sakazuki under the belt at a, at a regional event. 500,000, whatever plus. Nats was won by Anel. All, all of it was won by, I mean, Anel was winning everything here in, the, in North America. Well, that won't be the case of Law in 08. 
No, 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 it won't be. We there, there is no like, like trust me when I say this. We, we, we've all, I've, I've gone. My, my, my buddies and I, we ran the numbers. There's just no deck better in 08 and in law. There's also no weakness to it. Raju, like if you wanted to start them out, you can't do that because Raju exists. If you want to just continue going out board, it Raju mitigates that by giving them more cards to put on the board. But like if you don't have hard removal like Luchi, then you're gonna just get screwed. The Dawn minus effect is not a cost anymore, and Black Maria just breaks the deck, gives you even Dawn. And if you haven't got rid of the board, if you're not a deck that has removal, you just get ran completely over by all the cards now swinging for sixes and sevens that are on the board. The problem is the leader. PSA announcement, law players, get your fun in and now. That leader deserves to be axed. Albeit, there are some cards that it plays. Black Maria is a very broken card. An incredibly overstated, overtuned card. I'll grant you that. But let me just give a quick Yu-Gi-Oh reference. I'll even give like, no, oh, I can't. We can't really say that. This this game doesn't have that. But I'll just give it Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Okay. Yu-Gi-Oh has a very big problem with banning cards around the problem okay so if halky fibrax is the problem or uh union yeah it's like union carrier it was like a link monster that was super super stupid um is a problem or the mecha phantom beast card that plays multiple tokens uh, League Monster is the problem. What they decided to do was ban all the cards that had synergy with it that, like, made the combos overly broken. Right? A Jet Synchron here, a Glow Bulb here, something else. And if you have multiple cards banned around these cards, just so that one very powerful card can exist, what are we doing? Why on earth would Bandai want to be like, yeah, we need to ban our newest best purple 2K when Veggie has existed for literally years now? Only to allow law to exist. It just doesn't even make sense. We're going into like structure deck 20 here in a couple months. That was 10 structure decks ago. Right? And... You know, to the, to the, I'm not going to, oh man, but to all the people whining that it's finally time for Law's time in the sun. No, that's not how it works. You're not a part of the main set. I don't care that it's a really broken leader now. That's not how it works. You're overshadowing the entire meta by a mile. It's not about your time in the sun. This is about bringing about the apocalypse in the dark ages, right? Forget the sun, bro. It's been blacked out. This, the sky's been blacked out by arrows that are all laws and kid killers. Like, I mean, I, just, I just don't know what to tell you, man. There's nothing in it for the meta that's healthy as long as this leader exists. It's not even like Sokka was like, the, like, and here's the thing, man. Sokka was so skillful. The mirror match was intense. It was grindy. There were so many key matchups. Like Uda, like is very is very hard for Sokka to win against Uda. There was ways to test the hand, removal, they had no counter. There were so many things about Sokka that had to be executed to a very high level and degree. Matchup understanding everything. If you don't believe that, go watch the purple, yellow purple croc player beat the Sokka uh lose. Yeah, beat the soccer player and make him lose because he didn't know about the Oh Come My Way card that, that existed. Invested 10 Dawn into a Gecko Swing at zero and then Oh Come My Way in a Kikunojo. That's matchup knowledge. Like, like, you know, all these other things, right? That he just didn't take into consideration. He punted the game right there on the spot. 
There are things that made soccer weak. There were there were there and things that that made a good soccer player that just were so integral and fundamental to high level play in one piece. Law is just skating by doing none of that. It's like a guy on a it's like a guy committing Grand Theft Auto, stopping at bank after bank, just picking up whatever he wants, and then running off to the races with it. And they were all like, well, that's not the problem. It's the Black Maria Banks problem for refunding him too much dog. What? Get out of here with that, man. There ain't no way. Yeah, so Red Purple Law, bro. I'm sorry, that deck needs to be banned. The whole the leader, all of it. You ain't got no, there, there's no stinking way. You were everyone in this community was whining that Sakazuki was overtuned with two effects. I'm telling you, this man's got three. He's got Hound Blaze literally written into his dang leader. And instead of getting a buff of 3k, he gets to play another body on the board. And that, those bodies draw him cards, give him Dawn, are broken, have Rush, get plus 2k. Stupid stuff, man. Blockers for six. Like, what are you talking about? If you can't see that this leader is not a problem, if you can't see that, man, then there ain't no hope for you. So, I mean, that's all my thoughts about Red Purple Law. He's a cancer to the game. He's a cancer now. It's not been good for a hot minute. EB01, I'll give you this time now. He's okay now. You can have him now. Oh, wait, it rolls around, bro. That meta is going to be so toxic, it will literally remove people from the game of competitive play. No one's going to want to go to a regional and have to sit down and either play nothing but Law Mirrors or, or play their deck and just get stomped by Law. No one's going to want that. Sakazuki in the East, right? It took a while for Sakazuki to get to the numbers. It took like two major tournaments before Sakazuki was producing top eight and top 16 results that look like what's going on over there. I think they just had literally a top eight that was nothing but red, purple, wall. Didn't even remotely see that. Didn't see that no six here. Didn't see that no five here. I'm going to tell you that right now. Nope. Your matchup conversion spread for an L, for example, in 05 was the highest conversion rate of any top tier deck in the game. I told you all that. But I don't know, man. I hope that this PSA announcement and this, this long rant is a call to action and a wake up call for you. Because this leader should not exist. It just shouldn't exist. It's fine now. But I'm going to say this right now. At the end of 07, I hope that Van I releases a statement saying that at the end of 07, this leader going forward will be banned. I just hope so. Because an entire 08 meta of that toxicity will literally drive players away from the game. Because the people in the West are a lot more petty than the people in the East. You make people mad here in the West, they will boycott your game. They will not play it. See Fusion World. It's getting, it's, the numbers are starting to climb back up because they finally banned a tier zero leader that was released in set two. Well, didn't ban it, but banned broken and problematic cards in its deck. But again, right, Fusion World did the mistake that I talked about with Yu-Gi-Oh! It banned cards around the leader instead of just banning the leader. I agree, Rand didn't need to be banned. Didn't need to ban her if Topku's gone. But they didn't want to ban the leader because it's a set two leader. There's only like 12 leaders in the game. 16 leaders in the game, something like that. So they didn't want to get rid of one of their 16 only leaders in the game, which is fine. So they hit what they hit. That's cool. That's good, right? I'm, I agreed with everything that they did. And I explained that in my last video. And it was okay in that instance. It is not okay for you to be like, well, we might need to ban, you know, Black Maria. Rage is still a problem. Like, even if you ban Black Maria left pudding... The deck is still busted, bro. Like, even if you remove Black Maria, just watched a game against Calgara where Black Maria wasn't even played and it got the floor wiped with it. Wiped the floor with him, bro. Pudding was enough. So I just don't I, I just don't know where we're at, man. I don't know why we're even trying to have these like discussions and conversations about him not being busted. He is only gonna get more broken. And here's the thing that you have to realize. It won't stop with just Black Maria. In 09, when something comes out, 
and it can be abused, it will be abused. Just imagine a four for a four for five that reduce is something five thousand power. Just on play. That was an effect. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. You're gonna tell me an eight thousand power card just loot like gets bottom decked? Katakuri to the bottom of the deck? Oh yeah, man. That's my point. You can't even make that card because law exists. And there ain't no leader in the game. Ain't not not one leader in the game that has that level of impact on every card in multiple card pool colors that does that. There's not a single leader in the game that even comes close to doing that. I mean, Rob Lucci's effect has nothing to do with the card pool. Nothing. He's just got really good cards and good tools. And then like other generic cards that are very good with some of the tools that he already has. And that we already have in general in the game. No, but red, red, purple law is literally just a straight, oh, how good is that card? I'll take that right over here. Give me a second real quick. Four or five, you tell me there's a four or five counter reduces something, 5,000 power. Yeah, we'll put that in the deck. Just kick, kick a Gordon. We got counter power and we got that. Ah, we can fit that in. You mean tell me turn two, can you play two bodies? Remove? Yeah. Oh, I got you, dude. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And that's how it's going to be. And it's unfortunate that that's, that is that is the state the game is going to. And it's just demoralizing to watch. Uh, blue, blue is so good in 08, and it can't... Blue has its first actual grip of being able to be, like, competitively viable. And then it just runs into red, purple, law and gets it absolutely ran over. So, that's pretty much going to do it for this one. Thank you for sticking with me as always. If you have any extra opinions or anything that I missed, or you believe something different than anything that I've just laid out to you, go ahead and leave a comment section down below. As always, this is a discussion. Timestamps on this one probably won't be provided because it's intro and then Red Purple Law rant in general. So, they're, to the guy who keeps talking about timestamps, I got you on the last one, but I'm not going to do it for this one. Um... Rob Lucci guy will be coming probably not. I'm deciding on whether or not I want to bring the deck profile and the guide before I go to Gen Con because like I said, I know that there's a lot of people who have been like kind of competitively sleeping on some of the things that I'm playing in it. And I've gotten a lot of criticism from players and then they sit down and play me and then I start mopping the floor with them and I'm like, yeah, well maybe I should just let everybody believe that this deck is not as good as they think it is and then i'll just show them how good it really is so um i've been thinking about doing that so uh i'm not sure when the guide's gonna come out but one will be coming i'm really excited to show you guys everything in the deck profile um and then uh aside from this video and wanting to make one i do have a very fun deck that i want to show you that arctris uh are, i'm already going to like give him the, the credit for it it's basically his deck and his design that he showed but it's a blue green zorio if uh with warlords in it if you haven't seen it, i suggest you go check it out i'm gonna do a uh deck break uh deck breakdown of that as well with a, a deck profile it's super fun it's the deck that like i'm just gonna sit back and breathe when i go to locals or if you have an off mat at night i look forward to playing it so um thank you guys so much as always for uh stopping by checking it out and uh I hope that this one reaches all the red purple law players and and, and, and the, the naysayers about it and just talk some sense to you about why the leader needs to be banned. So um, anyway, I will talk to you guys next time and I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Marcus and TCG Discussion signing out. Laters.